rule of thumb what I tell people because uh, when they're trying to transition to 1099 from W2, yeah. take whatever you're making and then divide it by 1,000. So okay. if you make like 100,000, divide it by 1,000, 100 per hour. That's your hourly rate gotcha. that they're charging to the government. Okay. But they're okay. not paying you that. They're paying you probably like half, <laughs> if anything. Mm, okay. Yeah. So that's how you can kind of know what it is they're charging versus what you're getting paid. Welcome back to another episode of A Day in My Tech Life. This episode is going to be crazy, <laughs> featuring Herlane Muhammad. She works at the Pentagon and she's a cyber countermeasures engineer. So you definitely want to pay attention to what she's saying because she has done so many things in her career and now she's getting her own contracts with the government. So you got to pay attention. <laughs> so thank you for coming no, on, Thank Herlane. you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Look, I'm excited to have you because... <laughs> People don't really know, like, you know, you've been super low key, mm -hmm. but you've been you've been doing your thing. You know, you got off Twitter. Yes. And yes. now you're <laughs> focusing on more just actually doing things for your cybersecurity company mm -hmm. that you have. And then you're also making content as well on TikTok, too. Yes, yes. So I That's see you doing the content. It's been a journey. Yeah. <laughs> I struggle staying consistent with it, though, with TikTok. It's, it's not easy. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not easy at all. But yeah, so like, let's get into like, where are you from? You know, what made you want to get into tech? Um, so I didn't really want to get into tech to begin with. So really? my mom, you know, my family's from Somalia mm -hmm. originally. So Somalis, they're African. They have mm -hmm. this thing where it's like you could be a doctor, lawyer, engineer. Like yeah. <laughs> tech wasn't an option, especially back then because I was starting my career back in like what, 2009. Mm -hmm. um, so there was the Texas uh, Workforce Commission. I know they have like TWC. different workforce. Yeah, yep. TWC. So they had a summer youth program okay. when I was 15 and it was to be a IT um, intern and then admin assistant. It was like an IT at intern. At 15? Yeah, yeah. So, so they started at 14 actually. 14? They started from 14 I think to 24 is the ages that they go for their summer youth programs. Wow, okay. And most cities have that. I know DC has one too. Okay, that's dope, that's mm -hmm. dope. So I did that, and I was an IT intern, but it was like basic stuff they didn't have, you know, troubleshooting Word, right. Office, and things yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're young, they don't let you do it so much. Yeah. That's why I say, too, about, like, my first tech role at 16, I was like, I wasn't doing much. I had to ask them to, like, start reformatting hard drives, so they weren't letting me do much either. Yeah. yeah. So I started with that one, and then um, I was joining the military, but I was going to be a medic, which is 68 Whiskey. Okay. My mom was trying to, like, push me in that direction, yeah. and then the recruiter was like, oh, you scored really well on the ASVAB. Yeah. Um, he was like, why don't you look into the other ones that qualify for which was like intelligence and it specifically okay. the two main ones so. so you didn't want to go intel not really because i was like i don't really know what intel held, right but, yep. uh, he was like yeah you know you can do it is going to be in georgia where you do the ait um so i did it as a 25 bravo it specialist okay and 25 I b shout out to y'all 17 thank uh -huh. you <laughs> i love my signal folks i love signal folks yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i work with them at fort hood so i know all about them yeah so I started with that in the Army when I was 17. Okay. And then um, when I was in the Army, after I got out, I was going to go back to school and still trying to do pursuit, like, medical school. <laughs> so <laughs> I did pre-med because my mom was just, like, pushing me, pushing me. Like, <laughs> she was like, hey, option, I don't care you know? what you're doing with this tech stuff. You are going to yes. be a doctor. Because all my family, so my sister's a doctor, my brother's a doctor, my other sister's a nurse because she didn't oh, end wow. up going to medical school. But, okay. like, they all... They all went the medical route. So I was just like, I don't know about this. I did three years of uh, biology pre-med. Mm, okay. And then I ended up just like dropping out. I was like, all right, I'm going to quit school. Because <laughs> I was working in tech the entire time after yeah. that. So I started working um, at Best Buy after I got out the Army. Okay. Because I didn't really know like what roles I could apply for. I didn't yeah. know. Nobody had, they don't give you guidance. Yeah, that's, that's the thing about the military. They yeah, they, they don't give you any guidance whatsoever. I think the most that I saw, like when I was working uh, for the Air Force mm -hmm. out in Hanscom, they had like a resume class and that was all I really saw. Yeah. Yeah. But they weren't really and like... And the resumes were trash that they give you, too. Yeah. I'm like, this doesn't even translate over to the civilian side of things. So right. That And then um, on top of that, when I was getting out, I didn't know what a clearance was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had a clearance when I got in. And you they, did? Yeah, yeah, so when I got in, they gave me a secret clearance. Okay. But my mom filled out the SF-86 and equip and all that. Because yeah. it was on paperwork back in the day, and yep. I didn't know. I was 17 at the time, so oh, okay. I got it So you didn't quick. even know? Mm-mm. I didn't know to go, like, when I get out, hey, yeah. look for a cleared position. Like, right, right. Because I remember when we first hotel. started talking, you were like, yeah, my clearance had expired. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it lasts because I was like, all right, I'm going to just do school, try to figure it out. Uh -huh. And then um, I had, at the time, people telling me, like, oh, looking to do an overseas. But mm -hmm. I was young. I didn't take it seriously. I was like, I want to go to Houston. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Houston is the party city. So. Yeah, yeah. Like, Houston's Houston's kind of like, so I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to do undergrad in Houston. So I went to U of H. Um, okay. That's where I actually did undergrad for, like, three years. And then as I was doing that, I ended up dropping out, and I was working at 
at the hospital at the time at CHI St. Luke's Hospital. Okay. So I was doing some like vulnerability management. I did sysadmin and then went up to information assurance and vulnerability management with them. Mm -hmm. And then once I finished up there, um, that's when I decided like, okay, I want to get back into contracting. And I want to, that's when I started realizing, oh, the clearance is actually worth something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I remember when you hit me up, we had that call back in the day. You were just like, yeah, yes. you know, expired. I want to get back into it. I want to become a government contractor. Yep. So I was like, okay, you know, just do X, Y, Z. And then three weeks later, you had your clearance. Mm -hmm. And what did they give you? Your TSSEI? Yeah, I think? TSS. That's probably mm -hmm. like the transition point, like changing point in my life. Because right. I was living in Houston and they're like, okay, you can transition, like move to New Mexico. Yep, yep. So like if you come out here, um, it was a cyber role and they're like, we'll sponsor your TSSEI. And that yep. was like a little bit iffy because it was, I had to take a pay cut to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. So it was a pay cut. They were offering like 75K at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was already like making six figures and I was just like, ah, oh, do I want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. But I wanted to get out of Houston too. <laughs> like you said, it's a party city. It's, it's a like, party city. It's People not a like, you want to move to Houston? I'm like, no. Like, no. I go visit Houston. I come stay for a few days and I'm out. Like, yeah. to me, it's not. Like, not you really want to be focused, mm -mm. and especially on your career, like in like GovTech, tech in general, it's no, like a Houston is a, a party fact. city. You're going to be distracted. So I just, I was like, let me get out of Houston. I had a house there. I bought the house when I was 21. I ended up selling it. And mm -hmm. then I was like, I just up and moved. I left. <laughs> you just left. So you I went to left. New Mexico. Yes. So I remember it was you and then somebody else who, who was well, like who I was doing consultations with. Yes. Both of y'all went to New Mexico and you got your plan. You still talk to Cameron? Um, Batiste, I don't know if he, he was part of your SLS group. <laughs> so. I don't know, you know, so many people. I don't, I don't know, like, because everybody goes by their, like, you know, Discord names. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this was, okay, this was a minute ago. Let's rewind it back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Simone met probably, was, I think it was like 2018. Yeah, about 2018, 2018 I think. 2018 was mm -hmm. when On Black Twitter? Tech Twitter started. Yeah. <laughs> Paris and when she started the Black yeah. Tech Pipeline. And then um, was 2019 was when I was moving to New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So when I moved out there, they ended up um, like within two months giving me a promotion to the site director. So the Cannon at Cannon Air Force Base, I was the yeah. IT site director over That's like the um, systems administration, systems engineering, networking, and cybersecurity mm -hmm. um, teams, and then also PC, like PC desktop support guys okay. um, as well. So that's when I started hiring personnel. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. And then that's when you end up hiring who yes. will not be named, I hit up, who acts super low one. key, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. He doesn't, he's yeah. on social media, but he's not, he's not out there. So right. him, um, Cameron was another one that came out there. Yeah. Okay. No, person. now I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So it was, so you hired three people. Yeah. Three people. So that I met through Simone because I was like, hey, I'm sponsoring for TSSEIs. Yeah. And I will teach y'all what you need to know if you're willing to just come move out to New Mexico. And a lot of people weren't willing to They, take they don't want to move. They weren't. But they it's don't. like, you can't get a sponsor for a TSSEI every day. No, no. So that's like, that's the big thing. Like I tell people, like sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do just mm -hmm. to get that clearance mm -hmm. and you only have to stay for either one year or however long it takes for you to get the clearance and that's you can fact. bounce that's like that's why companies really don't like sponsoring the higher clearances because they already know like all right we're not really paying them that well we're gonna give them a clearance and they're gonna get experience yes. so we probably won't have them too long so they're they're constantly paying for people to get clearances because mm -hmm. nobody wants to live in new mexico no they don't new yeah. mexico arizona is another one we used to sponsor for but yeah nobody wants to be out there but yeah the arizona like... tucson nobody wants to go out there like <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to get a clearance, like mm -hmm. I always recommend people go to the places nobody wants to live, like Patuxent River in yes. Maryland. Nobody wants to live there. They're always sponsoring mm -hmm. um, Huntsville, Alabama, yeah, yeah. always Huntsville. sponsoring New Mexico, uh, also Arizona, even out in Boston at Hanscom Air Force oh, yeah, Base. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's where I started at with the government. Nobody wants to work there for whatever reason. And they're always sponsoring, too. So, mm -hmm. like, if you're willing to go to these places where they're sponsoring clearances and nobody wants to go, even if you don't have experience, you have a high chance of getting a job. So mm -hmm. people got to, like, take advantage of that. And then on top of that, too, they'll pay for your relocation. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you want to take full advantage. Like, why not? Like, what is there to even lose? Even overseas, because a lot of people are asleep on, like, I have a plenty, like, I know, like, six or seven people that mm -hmm. got sponsored clearances out in Kuwait. Yep. Kuwait, 24-7, like, yep. uh, Triple Canopy. Vectris. Like Vectris, mm -hmm. all of them. They're always sponsoring out there. If always. You're willing to go, if like, you're willing to go, that's what I'm like. You get it in six months. A yeah. secret six months, you get it, come back, mm -hmm. and you can work in the States, too. That's another easy one. Right, another easy way. So, like, that's why I tell people, like, you just got to be willing to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, and they're like, it's that easy to do it? Well, you know, you got to learn your technical skills first mm -hmm. and then start applying to these jobs. And just because you're willing to come out there, they'll give you opportunity because yeah. you can't yeah. find somebody every day that want to go live in New Mexico. That's true. And I, I've been out to White Sands, so mm -hmm. I already know how it is. Yeah. Like, I've been out there before. Like, <laughs> right. flew into El Paso, had to go drive to New Mexico. I'm like, oh, it's nothing we out here. You're in the middle of nowhere. You're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so, you know, I know how it is. So, like, you've done so much mm -hmm. in your career. 
really in like like you've been you've been in tech pretty much your whole life yeah. even though your parents didn't want you to be in tech no, I was I was working in it but I was trying to slowly get away from it yeah. but I just always ended up staying so um I've been in tech almost, four, it's been 14, it's going to be 15 years next year. Going yes, to which is crazy. <laughs> so 15 years working in tech yeah. and most of the time you've been in GovTech. Mm -hmm. So I guess if people wanted to like get to where you are and now, you know, you're doing more cybersecurity, you've yeah. been doing cyber for a while, mm -hmm. but like if people want to get into cybersecurity today, like what type of skills do they need to focus on and what do they need to do? It depends, honestly, I want to say find your pathway first, but yep. like what you want to focus on within cybersecurity. Um, I think it's best to be versatile in all different things. So it's like, even though you're going to be incident response, still know a little bit of like GRC on the side. Mm -hmm. um, networking heavy, regardless of what you do. Mm -hmm. Networking for sure. I think also having some sort of coding experience is always beneficial. Um, Python, any type of bash, like script, scripting language, yeah. um, Linux. And JavaScript, also SQL, too, because mm -hmm. you got no SQL injection attacks. <laughs> Look, so you just named, like, 10 different tech skills. Yeah. And that's why people, like, I, I never say people can go straight into cyber, because you have to know so much stuff. And, and you have to have that foundation and build upon that. The easiest part to, I guess, cyber to start into would be GRC. Mm -hmm. uh, the policy side and legality, I think, is an easier pathway in. And then you can transition into, like, vulnerability management and then do incident response after that. I think that's the, one of the best pathways that I've seen for people. Okay. Okay. So, look, listen to what Herlane yeah. says about getting into cyber. <laughs> if you don't want to have to, like, either start with help desk, even though, you know, we both started in help desk. Yes. So, like, I think a lot of people, they want to avoid help desk, but it's not like you have to stay there forever, mm -hmm. right? So if you're willing to... To, you know some people might have to take a pay cut if they want to like get in the help desk start getting that experience but you know I think it's a, a good thing to learn but you know you can skip it but it's gonna be harder right yeah. so a lot of people it, they go a long time without getting that reward mm -hmm. and the longer you go without getting a reward the easier it is for people to kind of like fall off and be like you know what this is not worth it that's true. so that's why I kind of like just recommend people like yo just focus on getting your foot in the door mm -hmm. and then you maneuver from there that matters more than anything right there you just said get, get mm -hmm. your foot in the door because the years of experience you have is what's going to count towards it at the end even yeah. if it was yeah. help desk experience help desk is still cyber which most people don't know that if because you they have you framework. doing way more than just like user accounts and passwords yeah, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> it's way more than Everything that. you're doing with AD, like the security groups in there, that's yep. still part of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. If you word it right on your resume, you'll still be good. Exactly, exactly. So you can use, like, nowadays for sure, you can use ChatGPT and completely revamp your resume. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're doing help desk or you're doing a different role, you think you are doing cyber tasks, you literally can ask ChatGPT, like, hey, here's my resume, copy and paste it. Um, can you reformat this to read more as, like, a cybersecurity resume? Yeah, yeah. And it'll do it. So no, that's the, a fact. don't that's sleep a fact. on it. You know, ChatGPT is free. <laughs> that's a fact. I would say more so also instead of just like help desk um, systems administration yep. and also network administration. Facts. If you can do network administration, network engineering for a couple of years and then transition to cyber, you'll be solid. Yeah, solid. yeah. So if people want to be network engineers, do you think they should get their CCNA? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, for <laughs> yeah. network engineering, more yeah. so like CCMP. Okay, but CCMP, like you can be like yep. a network admin with CCNA for yeah. sure. I prefer a CCNA over a network plus, but I'm a little biased because I got it from the military side. <laughs> look, yeah, and we can get into that because you know I tell people to skip the A plus. Mm. I also think people should skip the network plus, like if you really want to go into networking. Yeah. But like some people are so caught up on like, hey, I just want certifications. They want to like reassure themselves that they know the information yeah, so yeah. they'll get the network plus but i'm like if you're going to get a network certification you're better off getting a ccna yeah because it's a more specialized skill you know you're going to know the cisco routers also and everything more widely used yeah, yeah really. more widely used so if you do that you know that way you, you really want to focus on certifications that are going to help you get jobs mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. so people say i got the a plus i got the network plus i got the security plus and i still can't get a job but like most of the time, they're just not applying to the right job. That's like true. if you get the CompTIA trifecta, it's going to put you in help desk. <laughs> I'm going to be straight up. That like <laughs> it's going to put you in help desk. That's why I'm like, OK, well, if you're going to start a help desk, you can just get the security plus. You mm -hmm. can still learn networking without having to take the network plus. That's true. You know, so you got to kind of like understand where you're trying to go and what you're trying to do. But also where you're coming from, too, because yeah. a lot of people have transitional skills that can mm -hmm. still apply that they don't always realize to. Yeah, what, what type of transferable skills do you think people can use for either cybersecurity or just getting into GovTech? Oh, um, well, for GovTech specific, mm -hmm. definitely anything with customer service for sure, because mm -hmm. all a lot of tech positions are going to be customer front facing. Yeah. So you got to have customer service skills. Like, that's one of the things technical people they lack. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, man, yeah, like some technical people, they just like, I'm not dealing with this. Yeah. And they just shut down. 
So for us, the yeah. government is our customer. So yep. we're supporting like military personnel, we're supporting government civilian personnel. And a lot of times the contractors don't really know how to interface with them. That causes problems. Like <laughs> We are trying to win the contract back over. <laughs> so when you're having issues with the actual government personnel, that's like... They would be like, hey, positive. we're not working with this company anymore or we're not working yeah. with this person anymore. And if you don't get rid of them, we're not going to rebid the contract. Yeah, and you'll like, end up losing it. I've seen that happen a couple of times, too. Yeah, you, like, people don't realize, like, I don't talk about it too much just because most people are just trying to get their foot in the door. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is kind of like, you know, politics. I had an interview the other day, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, somebody else, her name was Bree, she was saying that, you know, she's had to learn how in corporate to kind of, like, deal with different things that, that you deal with being, like, black in corporate. Yeah. So I think, like you said, you know, having those customer service skills, knowing that you just can't, like, write off people or mm -hmm. be nasty to people and just always be professional it's just something you have to do especially if you want to have a, a long lasting career and get into those high um those high roles right yeah. like you said you got promoted to director right mm -hmm. yeah you yeah, got promoted to, to the site director within a year and a half mm -hmm. so you know i'm sure the soft skills played a lot in that yeah, yeah that's a fact that's a fact and then also um i'm trying to think what else besides just regular soft skills you want like technical skills specific? Yeah, technical skills too. That would be great. <laughs> um, yeah. Technical skills for cybersecurity. Um, well, I do. So I do countermeasures, which is mainly just detection engineering. We do a lot of tuning. So um, you always want to know SIM tools. Like I'm very Splunk heavy because mm -hmm. I do Splunk architecting as well. Yeah. So I always tell people go for Splunk because yep. I'm just kind of biased. Yeah, but but I mean, <laughs> I in like Tech, Splunk like runs it. You yeah. know, we got CrowdStrike too. Yeah. Um, Solar Winds. So They're still using that Solar for Winds. EDR. Yeah. Then, um, mm -hmm. That's more for like network monitoring, but yep. so we use my, uh, Azure Sentinel too. Okay, yep. Mm -hmm. um, we use Sentinel. Back in the day, we used to use ArcSight. They're okay. kind of decommissioned that, but um, Elastic Stack is open source, so people can use that at home too, and they're like their home lab. Oh, okay. So we just, because yeah. we just implemented Elk Stack too. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what else. Definitely like you mentioned CrowdStrike. So anything for threat intelligence is another mm -hmm. really good one. Threat mm -hmm. intelligence and threat hunting. Um, open source tools, because a lot of analysts don't really use open source tools to their advantage. Okay. They just kind of plug everything in VirusTotal, and then they'll be like, oh, it said it's not malicious, and then it's not malicious, but right. you can't rely on all of them. So I would say if you're able to really learn um, open source tools, that's really beneficial as well. Okay. Okay, so you have all of those different tools that Herlin just named. So mm -hmm. go look into them. Go look on YouTube. Look up some labs something right mm -hmm. so i want people to watch these interviews and actually get action from it and be yeah. able to take something from from it so you heard those skills that she said so definitely go do that so i kind of want to get more into like what you're doing now so yeah. you're you're you have your own government contractor yes, company right SciTech solutions <laughs> yes yeah, SciTech solutions which is major right mm -hmm. and you already started landing your own contracts right so how so is that been? Though. Sub, okay yeah. that's fine so been, that's but... <laughs> that's still like to me like to be a sub is amazing like yeah. you know, before you can become a prime, you, you got to be a sub. Yeah, yeah. So, no, that's a fact. That's mm -hmm. a fact. It's actually easier to get subcontracts, mm -hmm. though, from what I'm learning. Um, I'm in the process. We've been in business for about three months officially. Mm -hmm. Kind of unofficially, I was working on it, but three months officially. So um, in the past three months, I've been just working, getting my certifications. Because, okay. you know, like all the women-owned uh, business, yeah. veteran, uh, disability. So which ones you got? I want to get all of them. <laughs> you want to get all well, of I'm, them? I'm going to qualify for all of them. The only okay. one right now I have is woman-owned, but I'm in okay. the process of getting the rest of them. So uh, there is minority business. Mm -hmm. um, CBE is like certified business something. I can't mm. remember what that one is. Gotta, There's one for the 8A. So the 8A uh, just had yeah, some gotta, changes that yeah. were made. So but I'm you still can get it, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So that one is for like small disadvantaged businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just need to get, last one is veteran. Veteran, yes. Yeah. So you need yeah, to get all of those certifications. So you need to get the set asides and then I'm going to start bidding. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. The goal. So then you're going to start bidding. Yeah. So, so like, but you already, you're coming in as a sub, right? Um, I guess, so how has that been? Like, what's the value of these contracts? Like, what are you doing with these contracts? Like, how are you getting them? So, well, different ways. So mm -hmm. I got the originally, the first one that I got was at the Pentagon mm -hmm. in the role that I was in. Um, so they had some iffy stuff, you know, Apex Systems? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had some iffy stuff going on. Okay. <laughs> with Apex. Um, so I was working a uh, shift. So we do different, it's 24 seven stocks. So we do shift uh, schedules. Mm -hmm. So myself on the swing shift and then a couple of analysts that we had on the midnight shift, um, they weren't getting paid the shift differential, mm. but only for Apex. All the other subcontractors were getting it. So Apex is shysty. You're very shysty. <laughs> but they will give you a job, but they're a little shysty. Yeah, but that's the thing like, with yeah. these government contractors is like, you're not necessarily dealing with racism when mm -hmm. it comes to being a minority, but you're dealing with them trying to undercut you mm -hmm. um, because they're not going to tell you how much they're charging to the government for what you're sitting at in your position. So that's right. one thing I have to learn. Yeah, but, uh, but I do want to say this. Whatever they're paying you, just assume that the government's paying them at least like three times that. Yeah. yeah. So there's always 
more budget, more room for you to make yeah. more money, always. Yeah, that's a fact. Mm -hmm. So rule of thumb, what I tell people, because uh, when they're trying to transition to 1099 from W-2, yeah. take whatever you're making and then divide it by 1,000. So okay. if you make like 100,000, divide it by 1,000, 100 per hour, that's your hourly rate. Gotcha. That they're charging to the government. Okay. But they're okay. not paying you that. They're paying you probably like half, if anything. Mm, okay. Yeah. So that's how you can kind of know what it is they're charging versus what you're getting paid. Okay. But so Apex wasn't paying us. Our shift differential was like 10%. Um, I was already making like, I was making like 200K mm. with them, but I was like, I mean. Oh, so you were with paid. Apex? I was with Apex. Yeah, oh, yeah. and they, dang. When I came on. So I was with Apex and I was, I was making like around 200 with them, but I was like, I need all my coins. <laughs> yeah, I need all my so money. So I started bringing it up. I'm like, hey, why, yeah. why are just the Apex personnel not getting the shift differential? Mm -hmm. Because you guys are charging the government yeah. for it and you're getting like awarded this money. And they were like, oh, it's already um, put into your salary. Like you don't have to worry about it. Basically, mm -hmm. we took care of it. So I did some digging and I'm like, oh no, that's not true. Cause I don't see this in the, like, where's the verbiage in the contract? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't say anything about yeah. it in the contract. And then, um, so I, over like, it took like a year, a mm -hmm. course of a year, I got the PMO office involved for Lidos cause they were oh, the main. Wow. Um, and then I was able to, I didn't sue them, but I threatened to sue them. <laughs> yeah, look. So when the threats started coming in, yeah. I was like, hey, you know, we feel discriminated against. So I was like, because these as soon are as my you say that, personnel. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you say you feel discriminated against, it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That made them kind of move their feet mm -hmm. also. So I got them to essentially let me out the contract and come in on my own. Oh, okay. So that's how I was able to let them out me out the get me out the contract, and they gave me back pay Ooh. on top of the other personnel there. And back pay. So. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the other people too. Mm -hmm. So you advocated for the whole team. Yeah, yeah. No, no, everybody, like all, all three, it was three or four people yeah. from Apex. Wow, no, that's amazing. Like you mm -hmm. have to fight for your salary, yeah, right? Yeah. So people, they don't understand why I talk so much about salary mm -hmm. and why I do these interviews and just in general on social media, why I talk about salary so much is because if we don't know what you should be making, yeah. you will never know that yeah. you're being underpaid. No, so, no, that's a fact. Yeah, you'll, you'll never know you're being underpaid until you start talking to other people. And you they, didn't know until you start talking to your counterpart. Yeah, part, so counterparts. I started talking to them, and then the ones that were actually with Apex, they were there mm -hmm. for a couple years, and I was like, they were like, oh, no, it's always been like that. And I'm like, you're okay with this? Like, yeah, because you're <laughs> like, always supposed to get to differ like, differential is, pay for yeah, working night, yeah, always, yeah. no matter what. And I was like, this is this is illegal. I was yeah. like, I'm going to call the Department of Labor. <laughs> I threatened like EEOC complaints. I was like Department of Labor. And then I was like, oh, you know what's got them? I was like the federal acquisition regulation. Before. I was like, I'm going to contact them and tell them that you guys are misappropriating government funds Ooh. with the contracts. <laughs> yeah, because where's the money going that you all are supposed to be getting? In your pockets when it's not supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. So we got that to go, like basically got that squared away, mm -hmm. got back pay, which was like, it was only like 30, 40 K, but I was like, it was a nice little chunk of change. <laughs> look, look, only 30, 40 K. It was nice, it was nice. Cause it was for like two, two and a half years that they owed us. Um, and then I started my company, so SciTech. That was the birth of. <laughs> that was the birth of SciTech. That was. That Having was. to get your money, yes. had to get the coins from the previous contractor you were working mm -hmm. for. So I like, I, like, I want to clear that up too, because a lot of people don't understand it when I say like, oh, you know, we're government contractors. So there's like two sides of the coin, right? Yeah. You, you can be a federal government employee where you work on the GS scale or whatever scale that agency has, mm -hmm. or you can be a government contractor that works for one of these government contractor companies yeah. and you're W-2 yeah. when you do that, right? So basically the government contractor companies they win the bids that uh, the, con the government puts out, mm -hmm. right? They're like, hey, we need this type of work done. Who can do it for us? The government contractor companies say, hey, we can do it. It's going to cost us this much. So they end up winning the contract. Mm -hmm. And then you, as an employee working for that company, that's the government contractor relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So people don't understand that because they're not in the industry yet. Mm -hmm. But like, if you go on a government site, they're going to call you a government contractor, even if you're W-2, 1099, doesn't matter, right? You're not, you're not a federal employee you're a government contractor period mm -hmm. so um now that we got that kind of straight i want to talk a little bit more about like what do you do in the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. in these jobs that you're working or the contracts that you have before we get more into like you know the money and like what you're doing with these other contracts like what do you do in the day-to-day -day? so day-to-day -to -day with countermeasures it's mainly yeah. just tuning so all the stock analysts will go in and triage the alerts that they have mm -hmm. that come in um we built out the entire splunk incident review environment for them because okay. they didn't have it before we were there um, Kajon, which you're going to talk to tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, okay. So he works counter. So you did that with SciTech? Mm -hmm. You did that through SciTech? Well, it started with Apex and then start, took over with SciTech. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So you stole a, a contract from Apex. <laughs> I did steal their seat, but they were able to, <laughs> they were able to, I guess they were able to talk to PMO to get a different seat. Added yeah, they're like, the billet. yeah, yes. ooh, they messed with the wrong one. <laughs> Her lady is super yeah, smart. No, yeah, no, I was like, get me out of this and let me come in myself. So I did the okay. 1099 thing. Um, I have also a partner company I work with, Alico Cyber. Okay. That's one of my friends, Gary. So he's, mm -hmm. he's great. He has like eight people on the contract there oh, under nice. him. Yeah. So he's been kind of 
teach me, like teach me the ropes of everything. So I've been enjoying that. Yeah. Um, trying to learn how to get the facility clearance now. Yeah. So that's that's up next because it's like okay, most people know they sponsor you for clearance for yourself. Yep. But now my company has to get sponsored by another company. Yeah. To get the clearance. So that's a whole nother game. A whole nother yes. ball game. <laughs> yep, yep. So when you start doing government contracting on your own, like that FCL is everything yeah. because you don't want to have to rely on other people to sponsor your clearance and then you can't hold your own clearance. Mm -hmm. It's a whole it's a whole mess. It's a, it is a mess because yeah. then it's like I want to um, get awarded contracts, but they won't award you unless you have the yep. clearance. And it doesn't matter that I have a TSSCI, they won't give it to the company. So I'm, right. now I'm trying to work on getting like a home office skiff because mm -hmm. I guess you have to have a skiff located within your home yep. office location. Mm -hmm. yep. um, yeah, that's like a work in progress. It's, a, it's <laughs> a whole process. That's why like, so when I had made that video on TikTok, when I was like, you know, the government's going to pay me for the rest of my life by doing government contracts. And people were like, you're saying a lot of what you're going to do. I'm like, yeah, it's not an overnight process. Okay. Like you Years. have paperwork, you Years. have to get all types of certifications, you have to get at home skiffs, you got to make the connections, mm -hmm. you got to network. It's, it's so much to it. That's why like, I don't really talk too much about the government contractor side mm -hmm. because most people are just trying to get their foot in the door. Yeah. So like yeah. you thinking about, oh, I'm going to get my own government contracts. Like that's years down the line. Like you got to focus. That's the next level of your yeah, career. Yeah, that's the next level like. of your career. Yeah. Like after you have many years of, of experience, right? So mm -hmm. it's dope that you're able to do this. And like, you know, how much has networking helped you? with your government contractor company oh a lot it's how, mm -hmm. how i got some of the other subcontracts okay so just like word of mouth like people who know like my work ethic they'll be like hey we want to bring you on and then i'm able to bring on other people mm -hmm. um we got one with the u.s army corps of engineering mm -hmm. so i was doing like information assurance with them and then also department of energy um, for splunk architecting okay uh, so so all right, so when you do Splunk Architecting, what do you do on like the day to day there? Well, I tell you, it's a, it's more of a systems engineering job. Okay, it's one hundred percent just servers, yeah, like yeah. trying to get the logs, the heavy forwards, everything to feed back into Splunk and make sure that all the data is feeding in properly. Mm -hmm. um, we have like a multi site cluster that we're standing up right now, so we're trying to stand up like one of the Denver and a couple other locations, mm -hmm. and then once we get those stood up, get them feeding back into the main Splunk environment. Right, um, it comes with like some issues every so often. Yeah. So like we have one where there's external dirty networks, mm -hmm. so we can't have them feeding in to our right. you know, internal Splunk. So we're trying to figure out how to get like the cloud. You, wanna, they don't want to have two separate instances yeah. of Splunk to have to mm. monitor for the SOC analyst. So yeah. we're trying to see if there's a way we're comfortable, funny solution to try to get that <laughs> feeding into there without getting the, the dirty, dirty network yep. Yeah, part of ours. Okay. That's what I do with the day to day with that. But um, yeah. back to oh countermeasures. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think we went off in a Yeah, we, we did go over a little tangent. It's okay. So like so for countermeasures, yeah. what do you do day to day there? So countermeasures more so security engineering. So okay. we um, built out their Splunk incident review environment. Mm -hmm. We do tuning on a daily, so we'll have the analysts, they'll send us um, some tool rules that they need to tune with the mm -hmm. correlation searches. It started with I think there was like almost like 200,000 alerts mm. that would be coming in. Yeah. Um, and then we got it down to like maybe 300 per day. Okay. With all of those alerts hey, too. Hey, that's amazing. Um, we also create like custom signatures. So we create like custom YAR rules, custom snort rules, or we'll get them from certain threat intel. So we'll mm -hmm. that we have coming in. So like when CISA has their cyber advisories, they'll yep. send us like the YAR rules and we'll implement them. Okay. Or like the DTOs or the CTOs that come in too. Mm -hmm. um, those are just the like task orders and reports that come in. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've also built out Elastic. So we did a little bit of uh, XOR is kind of, we're using XOR as a SIM tool, okay. but it's not a SIM tool. <laughs> it's meant for, it's for SOAR automation. Oh but yeah, yeah. we created playbooks to kind of use it as a, a secondary, um, it's an internal, we call JRSS for this. It's an internal environment that they have, that they use, that they're monitoring. So mm. it's kind of like our tier two support also. Yeah, so y'all doing a lot. Like yeah, yeah. you, you've done a lot of, <laughs> of build outs for the different government agencies or customers that you're working mm -hmm. with and you're doing a lot of different like contracts so like how are you balancing all of this questions and answers yeah. i'm just really like so we work probably like 16 hours a day 16 hours yeah, a day yeah because originally like it started while i was working two jobs so i was kind of balancing that but it's just kind of it's it's a lot honestly you just have to like you have to do a lot <laughs> yeah especially working with different customers and then i do like a majority of the technical work right now and then mm -hmm. kajan also does technical work too but um i'm doing majority of it so there was time like last month mm -hmm. i was working the entire month through <laughs> like literally 30 days back like almost 12 16 hours every single day weekends too like, yeah yeah that's why she's trying to get her fcl yeah. so she can hire people like you all that are qualified to work but yeah you know with the you have your past performance but now your you know your company has to start doing that so yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's, that's gonna be at. that's a lot it was a lot but it's, it's but been it's worth it, it. Yeah. it's been paying off like so we did 100k in the first two months 100k in the first the two yeah. months which was amazing was that all for the one contract or two no two two of yeah, them yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's crazy. It was, honestly. <laughs> yeah, so it's just two of y'all. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, so now we're projected. So we have like, it's like set in stone because we're three months in, but yeah. um, set in stone already like half a mil set in about trying to get to 650 with, uh, we just got a private sector contract. Okay. So, yeah, so doing a private sector, but that one's going to be like part-time assistance for them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm excited about that. <laughs> That's amazing. So 650,000 in the pipeline for your company. For this next upcoming year, yeah. For the next upcoming year and you're only three months in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing, right? It's been, it's been blessings. It's been like rolling in, honestly. Yeah, but that see, that's that's what comes from like the years and years of hard work, mm -hmm. right? That's where you get to after you've built your career yeah. out, after you've networked, after you've learned the ropes, you know? Like, so that's why I want people to know about this is that, you know, you when you're starting out, it's mm -hmm. going to be a grind. Mm -hmm. And then there's also going to be seasons where, you know, hey, I'm trying to, you're trying to go to the next level, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm sure yeah. your next we level. We need multi-million dollar contracts. Right, you so want multi-million like... dollar contracts. So you're working hard again mm -hmm. to get these multi-million dollar contracts. So like, when it comes to tech, like if you're not willing to grind and put in the work, yeah. Like this career is not for you, right? Yeah. You're you're gonna either have to put in the work up. You're gonna for sure have to put in the work up front. Yeah. Right. And then once you put in the work, get your foot in the door. If you're comfortable with it, with where you are, you can kind of coast, mm -hmm. you know. But a lot of people are cool with that too. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Not exactly. For me, but. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not not for you. Not yeah. for me. Right. So it just depends on what you want, right? But you're gonna have to put in the work because mm -hmm. so many people act like I make it seem so easy. Like no, you. Yeah. It's gonna be hard at the beginning. <laughs> so. No, no, no. I understand fact. that. That is a fact. It was difficult. Um, I will say honestly, and a mm -hmm. lot of people are so anti-military. Yeah. Military, I think, is one of the best things you can do for your technical career. You think so? Mm -hmm. Easily. Okay. Easily. The benefits that come with it, you yeah. can't beat that, obviously, the benefits. But um, apart from that, the experience, that's one of the hardest things going in is trying to get the experience, mm -hmm. somebody willing to take a risk on you. But they're going to teach you everything up front. Right. Like going to 25 Bravo OJT. School, yep. one of the best things. We did networking, server administration, and uh, security, cybersecurity. Okay. All three of them. And we got all the certifications when I got out. Uh, military will get you any certification you need. Um, now, and degrees, too. That, too. Degree, yep. degree is going to be paid for. It's like mm -hmm. you can't beat. You get your certification, degree, security clearance, and experience. All from the military. And you could do like three years. You could do three years in the Air Force. Yeah. You get out and then start working. Like, it's really, you get med board out. It, you know, that's another one. You get your VA. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there, I, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hacks to the, to the uh, benefits. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing that I like. I'm trying to get my little cousins to join. <laughs> oh, you are? I am. I'm trying to, yeah, they want to join too. So I'm trying oh, to like, help them join. out. Yeah, so I'm getting So you don't them, want like, them just go in as, as government contractors? That too, but I feel like it'll be better since they're young. They need discipline. <laughs> oh, well, if you need discipline, the military's yeah, not they're bad. Yeah, they need discipline, that, and then yeah. also just like the extra added benefits for it, I think mm -hmm. will be beneficial to them. Okay. Yeah. Hey, look, nothing's wrong with that. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, so you, man, you've gone through so much like in your career and mm -hmm. in your journey. So like through all of the things that you've gone through, what is something that um, you could give the audience for like when it comes to like the hard things that you went through, right? Mm -hmm. So what are some of those challenges that you face that, you know, you could give them tips so they don't have to go through those same things? Um, number one is always advocate for yourself because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't do that. And I understand you don't want to be that person, especially like if you're a black person. Um, I don't mind being difficult. Honestly, I don't care. Like I'll be always, I'll stick up. I'll stick up for myself. I'll stick yeah. up for somebody else if they need someone that's like to stick up for them. Mm. Um, so always advocate for yourself because you're going to be tested and tried. Um, don't take disrespect. Don't ever tolerate it. Um, there is in like the beginning of my career, I was always nervous to say something. Yeah, <laughs> I but didn't that's wanna, how it like, is when you know, first start. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're, you're you don't nervous. Step on toes or yeah. whatever. But there's an abundance of opportunities. Don't yeah. stay anywhere where you're not valued at all. There's an abundance of opportunities out there. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. As soon as I feel like they don't value me, I'm out. Yeah. Like, because I'm like, I know there's other companies, there's other contracts. Like, even when I was at Raytheon, like, if I don't like how they're treating me, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. going to a different contract. Like, I'm not dealing with this anymore. No, that's a fact. And these companies are so large that there's no need for you to stick around where you feel like you're being untreated or they're mm -hmm. not valuing you, especially after you have your clearance, you got some experience, mm -hmm. you can go and you can maneuver however you want. No, that's a fact. That's mm -hmm. a fact. And then um, the other thing is also like double dipping, which a lot of people, um, overemployment, but the right way. <laughs> okay, what? Not at the All same right, so, time. You know? So what's the right way to do overemployment? Because you know, we can't do time card fraud in the government. No. No, they don't do that. So you have to have uh, different shift hours if you're going to be working or like work on the weekends because there's weekend positions as mm -hmm. well. But if you want to advance your technical career, uh, definitely do two different roles. 
two different roles where you can get to know the different tools and different things that they have there. And then if you do that for like maybe three, four years in the beginning of your career, that's also more that you could have on your resume showing work experience too. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if someone's willing to grind it out and do that for a while, that's definitely worth it. Okay, so you're saying they can work during the day mm -hmm. and they could work either a weekend job or a night shift job. Yep. And it could be part-time, full-time. It doesn't really matter. Those are opportunities out there, too. Mm -hmm. And people don't really ever apply to the part-time jobs. They don't. Yeah. yeah and, they and, don't. and with the part-time jobs, they give you full-time benefits. Mm -hmm. So you could, I know at Raytheon, it was like you could be part-time and you'd still get the $25,000 a year educational assistant uh, benefit. Yeah. You get all the other benefits. So, like, take advantage of that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And these jobs, when they do, when you do overemployment the right way, are they 1099 or they're W-2? Does it matter? No. Well, you can do either or. Mm -hmm. um, so... W-2 is a little bit harder, so you can't be doing multiple jobs if you're a pri on the working for the prime. Yeah, okay. So like Raytheon, there was a whole issue with that. Yeah. Because <laughs> they, I was working in a sub with them also, so the, when we were in the sub, it's okay to have a different role. Mm -hmm. um, they don't mind outside work, but Raytheon has a conflict of interest yeah. with a lot of a lot of different companies, uh -huh. so they have an issue with they, that. They have contracts like with everybody yeah so yeah. they're basically everybody's competitor uh -huh. <laughs> um like so you don't you can't work for like lytos and raytheon but if you're working for a sub under raytheon and a mm -hmm. sub under lytos that's not a problem then okay something like that is okay too. yeah but you can't be like i'm gonna get a job with raytheon i'm gonna get a job with lytos yeah yeah, yeah they'll, then like, they'll, they'll have little <laughs> yeah they'll be like <laughs> uh, uh no nah, we, we're not going for that okay. almost everybody in our sock environment that works on the swing and mid shift has a, a different position oh really mm -hmm. I know people, they've been doing it for like, some, one guy who's been doing it for almost eight years. Wow. Paid off all of his kids' tuition in full, has multiple houses paid in full. Okay. And he's still doing it. I was like, you're not tired? Like, he's like no, I never get like, tired of getting a bag. Like, Hello? Well, I got kids. I got a family to feed. And he says, <laughs> so he'll do swing shift with us and they mm -hmm. overnight mid shift at another location. Wow. Which, so I've been told, it's easier. I was doing day shift in the morning to swing shift. So I'll do from like six to two mm -hmm. and then um, two to 10. Mm. So from 6 a.m. to 10 o'clock, it's kind of like you can get sleep, but it's, yeah. it's, you have to be up early, honestly. But right. That wasn't so bad for me, but I've heard doing it if you do from like evening to night, because a lot of people are night owls, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier. And okay. then sleep during the day if you're able to do that. Dang. So <laughs> I, want, I want to get into like, so what has tech done for you to like change your life and your family's life? Um, it's done a lot, honestly. Mm -hmm. So it put me in a position to be able to help other people. That's number one. So yeah. just like the amount of uh, money that it's afforded us, I've been able to like give back. So um, we're doing a sponsorship for like SciTech. SciTech is going to be sponsoring Techsgiving. Okay. So yeah. it's like back in the day, I never would have fathomed being able to just been like here. To sponsor like, a conference. Yeah, yeah, and if y'all aren't coming to Techsgiving, make sure y'all come. Her Lane I'm speaking, kidding, yes. I'm speaking, her her uh, co-founder speaking yeah, as yeah. well. We're so going like, to be doing actually a technical workshop, so I'm excited yep. about that. That's okay. going to be really, really fun. Yeah, so I'll make sure I go through there. So I don't know exactly which day you're going to do it, but isn't it December 6th through December 8th? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes. I don't know which day, but yeah. once I get it, I'll post it so we can keep up with that. Yeah, so so you've been able to give back. Like, what else mm -hmm. have you been able to do with give your back, tech Give um, back, bring other people on. Mm -hmm. So give, like, people put people in opportunities yep. to be able to teach them, help them. So we're working also on a technical workshop. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to, um, a technical course, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I want to be able to give it for free. So that's okay. the goal. Yeah. <laughs> give it for free to the people, but sell it to the government. <laughs> exactly. That's the that's the way to do it. Yeah. That's the way to yeah. do it. You could definitely give away to, to free for the people and then sell it to the government. Mm -hmm. And then there's also, like, nonprofits, all different that kinds too. of things that you can do as mm -hmm. well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's really dope um yeah, financial freedom also is like another one financial yeah, getting freedom. to that point yeah okay so, <laughs> so i'm really i've been doing fire for a while so it's like yeah. being able to be in a position where i can save 70 80 yeah. percent of my income like that would have been unheard of back in the day because when i was first joining like help desk i was making like probably 35k uh -huh. per year and like once i got to 40k when they brought me on from being contract to hire that's when i bought my first house it was, I was struggling. I was 21 when I bought my house. <laughs> hey, 21 on help desk mm -hmm. and struggling to pay the bills. So <laughs> I was doing house hacking, which helped a lot too. But yeah. it's like not having to think, not having to like worry about money. That's one of those luxuries that is supported for sure. Yeah. So so you started help desk. You said you were at 30 or 35? And so I was contract to hire. So okay. I, you know, Insight Global, mm -hmm. they're like a staffing agency. So I came on with them and then got hired on by the hospital. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you went from... 30K. It was like 30 to 40. I don't know. What's 24 hour come out to? I don't know. I have no clue. Honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> so you make a 24 hour to like, what are you making now? So right now, my current rate is 150 an hour. Okay. Well, what's that to like yearly? So, it, well, it depends because we have yeah. different contracts that mm -hmm. we're working on. So I might have like 150 an hour, 160 an hour on a contract that has 1880 hours mm -hmm. and we have multiple. So one has 1992 hours and one has 1880. Um, but all together, it adds up to around six something. Six something. Yeah. 
Six what? Six, I don't know, I'm bad at math. <laughs> 600? It's a little over 600. I don't know if it would be like 670 or 680, but it's six, six something. 600K? Mm -hmm. say, oh, she said, like, yeah, what is 600K? Okay, yeah, 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 600. Yeah, you gotta say that. Like, you like 676, eight. Look, so that's the type of money you're making. Yeah, look, yeah. look, look, yeah. So, so 600, 680K. Yes, for the contracts that we got awarded right now. That's amazing. Contracts. That's amazing. So you're, you know, obviously, you know, that's life changing money, mm -hmm. you know, and then you've been making a lot of money even before you were uh, doing your own government contract and getting your own subcontract. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, did you ever think you would be here like in tech starting out no. where you started out? Well, yes and, and how no. old are you? <laughs> I'm 30. I just turned 30 in just September. Just turned 30. Yeah. Happy, happy belated birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I did, but I didn't. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I have like a different path in mind. I always wanted to do pen testing. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm not doing pen testing, I kind of like the side that I went with the government contracting and bidding on contracts. I want to eventually get into a pen testing role because um, I've I like the hacking side of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like we all saw the fun the fun side of cybersecurity, yeah. and that's like that's what I've always enjoyed. Um, so I'm still trying to move towards doing pen testing, but right now that's kind of on the back burner. Um, but what was the question? <laughs> I lost track. Uh, what was the question? Oh, uh, I forgot what the question was. Oh, I think you I was... said, did I see myself here? Yeah. Did you see yourself oh. in this position when you first started? Um, not. I just had a plan. I was just like, I know what I want to do mm -hmm. was to retire early. Okay. That was it. And I was I don't know how, but I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. But the way that you're working and all the stuff you're doing. Everything kind of fell into place. Yeah. Do you think you're going to retire early or you're just still always going to have, a, like, you're going to work? You Maybe you're going to run your it's company, have people underneath you? Country. Yeah. That's the thing now. Mm -hmm. Like, once I am start, like, actually bringing people on with the company, it's, I don't want to let it go once you start something. Right, right. <laughs> I don't even want to retire anymore now. I'm just kind of like, yeah. I'll be like. I'll be good enough to where it's like I can not do it full time. That's yeah. The goal. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like I'm like anti-retirement now. I'm like yeah. I love working so much, and I love everything I do so much. Like I don't ever plan on like stopping. Yeah. So it's weird because when you first start, you hate it. So yeah, you hate, hate it. it. Like first start, you're grinding, hate. you're grinding. Like yeah, I'm doing all this so I don't have to ever work again. Mm -hmm. And then once you get further and further in, like doing what you're doing, it doing gets what you easier. love, it's so it, much easier. Yeah, obviously. you're like. I actually like working. Yeah, like this, it's, it's, it's not, not that bad. bad. Yeah. Also, you get like once you're more senior in your career, get awarded like different luxuries that you didn't have when you were younger. Like micromanagement <laughs> is not a thing. No. <laughs> it's no. not. Like you can make your own schedule a lot of the time too. I like that. Yeah. Look, that's dope. So you you've had an amazing career. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure people they're seeing your story and everything that you're seeing, and I just want you to give them like one piece of advice. Like if they wanted to get to where you are, what's one piece of advice you can give them? Um, so I'm, I believe in following things that's already been done. Okay. So it's like, don't try to, you know, switch it up. So it, look at whatever career path you want to go in. So like, say you want to be a CISO, look at all the CISOs on LinkedIn and see what path they've taken. Cause a lot of them are like GRC focused mm -hmm. and then they've gone into the CISO route. So look at what they've done, look at what certifications they have, look at what positions they've been in and mimic that because it's it already it works so it's like don't try to reinvent the wheel i'm, I'm big on that honestly yep. um so reverse engineering whatever it is that you're trying to get to i think that's one of the best things that you could do yeah i have even now i still have a dream resume so i always make my i have like my current resume and then what my dream resume what i want it to look like like all the certifications i want to have throughout like my career um all the different like schooling that i want to have because I, I i love education hate school like, right same. i love education but i'm like okay yeah i want to like get to a point where i can get like a doctor's degree i want to be able to teach um, at like a university or actually teach cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. so those are make a dream resume and then work your way up to that i think that's helped me a lot too Look, yeah, that's a great tip. You know, I love reverse engineering. That's everything, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you figure out where you want to go to, and you got to figure out those steps in between, and mm -hmm. then just start working it, right? So that's an amazing tip. Um, this has been a great interview. Thank you. Where can people find you at? Where can people find more about SciTech Solutions? So SciTech Solutions, um, our domain was actually taken, but it's SciTechGovSolutions.com. Okay. That's where they can come to. Um, I'm on IG. I'm on TikTok. So TikTok is just Herlane Muhammad. Um, which I'm sure you can tell them how to spell that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Herlane Muhammad and then Herlane Mo is going to be changed to Herlane Muhammad on IG and then Herlane <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> okay, yeah. So make sure you go follow Herlane. Yeah. She has a wealth of information. She's doing a bunch of things. And then also, wait, before we finish, we, we got to get into this. So 
I know you're doing content creation now. Yes. And you just got like a big brand deal. I yes, saw that on the you. close friends. You know, we're not gonna put it out there. But I know you got a big brand deal. So like talk about that. Talk about like well, you the know content what's been creation. Crazy? Side. I'm so inconsistent, bro. <laughs> like I have a lot going on because mm -hmm. I'm you know, I also just started the hair care business that yep. um, my friend Marwa has been helping. Like she's another operations thing manager. that she's doing. So it's been like hard for me to stay consistent mm -hmm. with TikTok and then also because it's short form, I wanna be able to do more technical content. Mm -hmm. So it's kinda like difficult for me to get up and be able to like record and post every day but they'll still be emailing me and I'm just like I don't know <laughs> how it must be like old videos that will go viral or something so they'll still be reaching out and they're like hey we want to work with you mm -hmm. so one of them I have coming up was WGU okay I'm excited about that okay so they're shout out to you yeah <laughs> and which I felt bad because I kind of like I dropped the ball with WGU originally <laughs> I, had, I had a campaign with them yeah. and then um so work, they had me go on a mission. <laughs> oh. So I had to I had to go up and leave, like 24-hour yeah. notice to go to Guam yep. for a cyber incident that had happened. And then they needed everything to be due within the time that I was in Guam. Yeah. So I ended up being stuck there for like two and a half, three weeks. I, mean, I, I remember you like, went to Guam, yeah. I was just apologizing. I was like, hey, I'm not going to have this in time, and I'm yeah. so sorry. They tried to give me an extension, but it just didn't work out. But mm -hmm. then they came back around, so I was excited about that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. When they really want to work with you, they'll come back. Yeah, yeah. So they came back around. So um, I'm excited to have some content coming up with them. And then a couple different, um, I had one with a skincare brand. Uh-huh. Um, one with SPF. Y'all see the skin. Y'all yeah. <laughs> see it. So I, I love the routine. new content, you know. <laughs> so that's one of the things I want to, I want to definitely focus on is like beauty content. And then I'm working on a blog too. Okay. Because I want to have my blog back up. I had one back in the day, mm -hmm. but... I can think sister <laughs> it's hard it's yeah, hard yeah. when you're working like multiple different positions mm -hmm. but hopefully I'll get my blog back up it'll be life in her lane and then um, I'll have everything on there and get more brand deals get more excited <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no that's amazing so I, I just wanted you to talk about that because you do so many things, but like people don't know, you do a lot of other things mm -hmm. too. So you do things outside of tech, and you do even more stuff with tech too. I have so many different passions too, because yeah. like I like I used to do fashion design mm -hmm. <laughs> way back in the day. So I had a clothing line, and I would like learn to sew everything I would do in fashion design. Um, I want to get into bridal, okay. so that's another one of like the little leeways things. But it's like that's why you never really start working if you like yeah. if you're doing what you love. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true, honestly. But tech, I feel like, gives me the opportunity to be able to do that. Yep, exactly. Because it's like I can buy all this inventory. Not have to worry about it. <laughs> yep. Which back in the day would have been a struggle. <laughs> so right. it's it's just affording me to be able to also like hire help to be able to come and do with things that I need. That's mm -hmm. also then def like change everything, change the game because I don't cook no more. <laughs> I stop I stop cooking because it's hard. It's hard to keep up with. So I'll yeah, just, no, like, it is. Order People meals wonder why I don't cook. Yeah. yeah, you don't have time. No, You're so no. busy, so yeah. busy. So man, that's dope. So tech has allowed you to do all of those things, mm -hmm. make more money, follow your passion, help more people, mm -hmm. and really just live the life that you've always wanted to live. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that, you know, tech has been able to do that for Thank you. Thank you. And GovTech's been amazing. So mm -hmm. I hope people go follow you where they said they, they can follow you, where you said they can follow you at. Mm -hmm. um, and then make sure you all watch more episodes because we are going to have more fire episodes yes. like this. We're going to have Herlane's co-founder coming in from SciTech Solution as well. Yeah. So that's going to be another great episode. Yes, so amazing. make sure you all tune in and like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. My name is Simone Bees. Don't miss all the other episodes. <laughs>